Now, as far as Google Classroom, which was the next thing I was going to do, I'm going to hit stop presentation and do what I did yesterday. Um, so give me one second while I take over. Okay. So at this point, you should see my phone like you did yesterday. Now, um, I have my apps organized. Like I have an EHT one, which is all, you know, pretty much Google things. And I'm signed into my school account on here. Um, I would recommend that you take the video if you used your phone to create the video or if you use some other thing, like if you used iMovie on your computer or Loom or something else, that you take the time to upload your video into Google Drive before you put it in Google Classroom. And the reason why I say that is um, I, I even tested this out uh, before we got on, um, I did this yesterday, that if you don't put it into a Google Drive folder and have it organized the way you want to, if you put it right into Google Classroom and ends up uploading it to Google Drive anyway into your personal drive. So you might want to just use your phone to upload it into Google Drive. Um, if you decide from that point you want to link it from there, that's fine. Or maybe you might just want the comfort of being on a more of a device like a Chromebook or, or a desktop computer or something. So what I recommend is you take your video that you have that you like, that you edited the way you want, and share it to drive now of course you're going to need the drive app on your phone if you don't already have it on there um but once you have it on there this option will appear for you to be able to direct and then you'll see because i do have multiple accounts on here i have to choose the correct drive and this is the name it automatically is giving it um i'm not sure at this point that i'd be able to change the name i probably would end up doing that once i'm in google drive you know you can rename it and that would be fine but i could even select the folder i want if i want in my drive if i want in the shared drive um you know all those sort of nice organizational things that i have all my way too many shared drives um it, at the high school we have the video database that all the com kids share so we all have access to the same thing I could put in my 2020 folder, I could put it in summer, and then I could hit save here. Last thing you have to do though, is hit upload. If you don't hit upload, it's not gonna go anywhere. And as we talked about before, depending on your connection, depending on the size of the video, a number of factors, it's possible that the upload could fail. So I don't recommend um, like closing out of it until you know for sure that that blue bar gets all the way across because it, if it doesn't upload all the way, it's just not gonna technically upload at all. So just be patient while it's going through that process and know that you'll be able to access it on Google Drive within a couple of moments after that upload process happened. So at this point, I'm gonna go into my Classroom app. Again, another app that if you decide to use your device, that that's your preferred method, you're gonna wanna have the app on your phone um, so I have a brand new Google Classroom that I, I'm using that's just empty in here. But depending on if it's an assignment and all the, or if it's just a stream announcement, you already know how these components work in Google uh, Classroom. So I'm not going to really go into that. Um, what I am going to do is just go ahead and make this something new in my stream. And you can see if I'm doing this on my phone, there's an attachment for the paper clip that you're probably already familiar with is up at the top. And then from here, like I said, technically you could have gone right from your, you would have to say pick photo, even though it's a video, you would hit pick photo and go find your video clip and it would add it in there. But again, I, I did it the way I did it so it stayed organized. So I'm gonna hit drive. And in this case, I probably should have saved it to my personal drive. So that was my mistake. I should have saved it in a different location. But just know that had I saved it in my personal drive, I would have had access to it. It would have attached, it would have shown it. I can put a message to it. And then I could also, just like I would any other thing in my stream, I could assign to all the students or I could select what students I want to watch that particular video. So despite the fact I didn't attach it at this point, I think you'll understand that that would be the process of how you would do it on your phone. I'm gonna discard this at that point. I wanna have my go into that one. And just like anything else, I could hit add from Google Drive. Now here, not on my phone, I actually could access my shared drives had I uploaded in that location. But also, you can see that 
Google was intuitive and it knew that the most recent thing I added was this video. So I could click right on that hit insert and that video would then be accessible that I could post it. Um, you'll also notice if you didn't find this already, that when you hit add, there is also an option for YouTube. So in that same walkthrough that we did for a Google Drive video, you could up, um, attach a YouTube video link, which would then allow them to watch it and do the exact same thing. So those are the two ways that you can bring in video content into um, your Google Classroom. The other, like, like we already sort of went over, would be that you could make a slideshow, embed the videos as they relate to that slideshow, and the students would be able to have access to multiple video content um, pieces if you want. Now, um, I should also mention that in this attachment area, I could add multiple videos. So if you wanted several different pieces of direction, um, you could add additional pieces not to uh, you don't have to break it up into individual announcements. You could attach several videos or a video and a slideshow or a video and a Google Doc or whatever that might look like. Um, you're not limited to just one file when you make these attachments. Leanna, can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, the problem we had over like the end of the school year when we were trying to show videos in Google Meet and there was no sound, if we embed the video, that won't be a problem, right? So when you, you're, so you're saying when you presented in a Google Meet to your students and you had a video that was embedded in the slideshow or you was not embedded in the slideshow? It was not embedded. Okay, so um, depending they, on when you did it, because it actually made a difference like what week you did it. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, in the beginning of the pandemic, we didn't, we were not able to play audio in a Google Meet. But if you did it like the last couple of weeks of school, let me uh, switch my presentation. Stop presenting. Let me just switch to this real fast. Present mm, Chrome tab. Meet share. You're probably not going to be able to see it as much as I would like you to. But where the presenting button is for me, when you click on that, you would normally have three options now, which at the beginning of the pandemic, you did not. Uh, Eileen, can you maybe explain a little more what your comment was there? I have a lot of um, like links that I teach business. So there's so many like news clips and everything that I just like to play as an example. Mm -hmm. And none of them, no matter what I did, because I, I think I um, emailed you a couple of times. Every time I played them, the kids were like, there's no sound. So it just for I don't maybe I did something wrong. It just never corrected itself. Um, well, I, I can time. tell you that I know from even doing these presentations now, like if I don't remember to change the Chrome tab presentation every time I go into another place, it's not going to pull the audio. So okay. right now, if I, if I were to go back to that slideshow that I've had up, and then mm -hmm. go on to YouTube and that ended up being a new tab, it's not gonna play. I would have okay. to choose that YouTube tab to make that play the audio for it to work. Like it's a little cumbersome that way, but that's mm -hmm. where if you take the time to embed all the videos that you may wanna play, if they are coming from YouTube into a slideshow, you won't have to keep constantly paying attention okay. to the Chrome tab you're in. That's why I'm on this class. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, no problem.